Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Welcome to the latest workshop, The Ultimate Guide to... I almost said Digital Marketing for Roofers. Oh, the ulti- That's my book, by the way, right? So welcome to our latest workshop, The Ultimate Guide to Ranking on Google Maps for Roofers. This is, I think, the most important workshop that we put on every year. There's been a lot of changes in the past year. There's a lot of changes that are going to probably be happening in this next year. So pay attention, listen up, take some notes, all that kind of stuff. All right. First of all, who am I? My name is Chris Hunter. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of RoofingSites.com. I'm the author of The Ultimate Guide to Digital Marketing for Roofers. If you don't have this in your hands, by the way, wait till the very end and I will give you a chance to get a free copy of this. I'm a member of the NRCA, RCAT, all of these initials, all of that kind of stuff. We like to think that that we're in this roofing industry with y'all, okay? We like to say that, that, that we are the experts, we think, on roofing marketing inside of the yeah. industry. I'm a father of three. I've got three pretty awesome kids, one that is in college, one that's in high school, and one that is in middle school. I've been doing search engine optimization since 1998. That really, really dates me. I'm, I'm old. Yes, I know. I get it. But I've been doing this stuff a very long time, okay? And I, my first website that I ranked was actually on Yahoo before Google even came around. I've been doing this stuff a long, long time. Random fact about me is that I actually rode my bike in 2012, an actual bicycle bike, by the way, from College Station, Texas to Washington, D.C. to raise money and awareness for pancreatic cancer, what my dad passed from. It was something that God called me to do. And I just, uh, it, it was a Forrest Gump moment. And I just got on a bike and rode, right? No, it wasn't that. It was planned out, but we did ride from College Station to Jacksonville and went up the Eastern Seaboard. It took me 23 days in the saddle. 2300 miles ask me about it sometime i can you know fill your ear but that's not what we're here for okay we are on a mission i'm on a mission to double the size of 100 roofing companies by 2028 all right if you're here hopefully you will be one of those companies that we do double and double and double again okay that is our mission that's what we want to do all right so let's get on with this all right i talk about this a lot of times but there is a problem inside of the roofing industry we were just talking about that in the DFW area. You can throw a rock and hit a roofing company, okay? That is happening over and over and over in every major metro area in the United States, and especially in places like Texas, that there is no licensing requirements, okay? A lot of people are fed up with their employers, and so they are splitting off and creating their own roofing companies. You might be one of those that are sitting in on this or listening to this, okay? The problem with that is that the more roofing companies that we have, the more choices that there are. And so the consumer become completely overwhelmed. They don't know who to choose. So, But it's your job to ensure that you are positioned in the right place to be the choice versus a choice. Hopefully this makes sense to everybody because by the time that if your marketing is working correctly... All of your marketing. I'm not talking about just Google Maps right now, but I'm talking about your comprehensive, all of your marketing. If it is working properly, it pre-positions you for the sale. Okay. It makes you the choice in your market, which is exactly where we all want to be. Okay. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that most marketing, most of y'all, you rely on tactics. You don't rely on an overall strategy. You don't have a strategy. Most of y'all don't have a strategy. Okay. I literally just got off the phone with someone that says that he's confused and, and he feels like he is hitting a brick wall on trying to scale his company because his marketing, he's not sure if it's actually working or not. And that's honestly because he is focused on tactics and not strategy. Okay. So what is that strategy? Well, the strategy that, that I wrote my book on, right? It's called the 4 Hour Roofing Marketing System. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because we have a lot to dig into on Google Maps. But the 4-Hour Marketing System is four, made up of four pillars, reputation, reach, resell, and referral. If you notice, reputation is your bottom layer. That's your foundation of absolutely everything that you do in marketing. If you do not have a solid reputation, nothing else that we do that you do is ever going to work. Okay, so it's important to have a strong foundation, just like in a house. Okay, just like in a building, we want to have a strong foundation. Reach. When you talk marketing, this is what most people talk about. This, these are all the tactics, okay? Search engine optimization, Google Maps. All of, the, all of these are basically to get in front of more people today than knew about you yesterday. 
The next two pillars are super important and almost all roofing companies completely ignore these. Okay. Resell, you're 15 times more likely to sell to somebody that has purchased from you before. That's the latest research. Okay. But yet very few of y'all are actually going back to your database of people. Okay. You're the people who have worked with you before in the past, your customers, your homeowners, and saying, hey, we also offer gutters and and windows and siding and solar and this and that. Whatever services that you provide, it's simple to go back to those people if you have a system to do that. Referrals, we all build our businesses at the first on referrals. But the larger that you get, the larger that you scale, the harder it is to scale this one piece right here. So we have built a, we call it the referral machine. We call, you know, we built a system to help you get referrals into your business. So this is the 4R marketing system. All right. So let's talk about the next thing here, which is Google. Google specifically. Google has the highest buyer intent of any medium out there. Okay. But yet, very few of y'all actually focus on Google. We focus on Google because that's where everyone is going right now to find your services, to find you. But if they can't find you, it makes it hard for, for people to hire you. Okay. Now, and, and I say it's got the highest buyer intent because people are searching for you. They're not going to Facebook or Instagram to search for a roofing company. No one does that, right? You don't go to Pinterest to find a roofing company. You don't go to TikTok to find a roofing company. They go to Google. They pull open that $1,000 machine that's sitting in their pocket, that's sitting in everyone's pocket, okay? And they pull it out and then they, they go to Google. Right? They might ask Siri, but Siri is not that good right now. It is what it is. They're eventually going to figure it out and get better. But if they are, are on Android, that's hooked directly up to Google. And they ask the Android, hey, who's the best roofer in my area? It's going to go to Google. Okay, So that's why we, as marketers, as roofers, right, we want to be there where people are searching so that we can be in the right place at the right time that they're searching for your services. Next. How do you dominate Google? Well, there are four spots on Google. Okay, we're not going to go. We're just really briefly going over this. There's local service ads. These are the Google guaranteed ads. You have Google ads themselves. Like These are the traditional pay-per-click ads. You have Google Maps, and then you have organic. Okay, organic is, is how Google started out. Okay, you want to be in all four of those spots when people search for your services in your service area. Okay. Where are they? Well, this first spot up here, these are the local service ads. Second spot on this illustration are Google ads. Okay. The third spot here is maps. Okay. This is where we're talking about today. And then the last spot is organic maps. What we are seeing right now is that that is where the vast majority of the phone calls are coming from. So that's why we're talking about this today. And that's why this is so important. All right. So just few quick illustrations. These are some screenshots that I took this morning, right, of some of our results. This doesn't look so good because this is a before, okay? If you see the maps, area 20 plus, you know, that's horrible. The dark red is horrible. The greens are where you want to be, the one, two, and three, okay? When we first took this client over, that's this is what it looked like. This is what it looks like now, okay? A little bit better. This was before on this client there in the South Austin area. Okay, looked pretty horrible, right? And what this represents, this is a 13 by 13 mile uh, square. And this shows where you're placed in each of these areas when people search for your services, okay? You obviously want to be in the one, two, or three spot, okay, to be in the maps three pack, all right? This is, so this was a beginning. This is where they are now, right now. This is another one. This is where a client is currently right now. All ones and twos and threes. This is these guys are rocking it right now. These guys right here are ones, twos, and threes as well, right? So they're rocking it pretty well as as, as well. So I only illustrated that just to show y'all. Hey, we kind of know what we're doing here, all right? And we kind of know what we're talking about. Okay, so let's talk about the three pack. All right, this is where we want to be. All right, as marketers, as roofing companies, this is where you want to be because this is where people are going to go. Right, this is where they're going to call you from directly from. Okay, they might research you a little bit. They might go to your website, but you have to be in that three pack to begin with. And what we're going to talk about today is how you get there. So, a few things to note: maps. The three pack is proximity based, right? Meaning that you have to be close 
to where the searcher is searching from. You can't be, let's say I'm in College Station, Texas. And if I do a search for roofing company near me in Google, it's going to bring open businesses that are in the College Station area, not Houston. Now, if I expand that map a little bit, right, I actually go into Google Maps and I expand the map a little bit, it might show some some Houston-based companies, right? But for the most part, the very first search is proximity-based. So the closer that you are to where your searcher is, the better that chances that you have to come up. Second, you have to have a real office these days. You can't be a service-based business, service area-based business, okay? Back in the past, four or five years ago, you could be a cert- you could list your Google, back then it was Google Maps, right? Uh, Google My Business, sorry. You could, you could do your Google My Business listing as a service area business and still rank in that three-pack. Nowadays, you can't do that. Part of that is because everybody else has offices, and so therefore Google has a higher importance on offices, has placed a higher importance on offices. So if you're in an area where all your roofing companies in that area have real offices that are verified, those guys are going to show up first. Okay. Next, you got to have reviews. You got to not only have reviews, you have to have a system to get reviews on a steady basis. And they need to be four and five stars. Google is not going to let you be in the three pack if your reputation stinks. Okay. So make sure that you have a system that's getting reviews on a regular basis. All right. The next is EAT. E-E-A-T. All right. This is something that Google came up with that they told us about, right? Google never tells us anything Right. So we want to make sure that when they tell us a formula, especially like this right here, that we listen. EEAT stands for experience, expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. There's a lot to unpack there. Um, let's start with experience. Experience just simply means are, are people having a, are they going to your website? Are they interacting with you on social media? Are they actually giving you a four and five star? that experience that they see is your is your website fast right are people bouncing from your website there's a lot of things that go into that one category but that's what that roughly means expertise that's simple are you an expert have you demonstrated that you are an expert in your area you've got to demonstrate that to google authority comes back to in my mind links coming back to your website are the links that are linking back to you from authority websites and when i say to you i mean your website itself That's all part of this whole equation. Remember that very base pillar that we talked about reputation? Well, guess what? Google is also considering that as well. If if your website hasn't been updated in in, the past decade, which I see those all the time, you're never going to rank inside of Google. Okay. Never going to rank inside of Google Maps. All right. So you have to have be an authority. The next one is trustworthiness. Are those links coming back to your website? trustworthy are you yourself trustworthy again that goes down to the reviews when it comes to the google three pack are you trustworthy in google's mind so all of this kind of goes into this now on this next slide here i have some ranking factors okay so there were about 100 agencies that are polled every year right in the in the entire world and they are asked specific questions and ranked so this is almost like a leno you know top 10 things that go into ranking on the three pack what all of these agencies came up with is this top 10 list absolute number 1 and and by the way this was this was voted on and presented in January of this year by white spark you can go look it up if you want to white spark ranking factors right survey all of these are right there Okay, so number one, what they said is your primary category has to be set to that will match the search or close to that. Google understands the difference between roofing contractor and roofing company and roofer. It understands that when it comes to the three pack ranking. Make sure you set the correct category. Don't set yourself as a general contractor. Make sure it says roofing contractor. Number two, keywords in the business title. Okay, I've I've got an asterisk here. Make sure that you have a doing business as a DBA that shows that that keyword is actually in your actual business name. Don't go out there and and, and just add the keyword into your business if that's not what it is, okay? But this is very 
if if let's say like here in College Station, if I were opening up a roofing company, or if I let's say I had a roofing company called A Plus Roofing here in College Station, Texas, if I wanted to rank, right, I would go file with Brazos County. That's our county here. Okay, I'd go file with them a DBA called College Station Roofing. I would set my office as College Station Roofing. I would make sure that I had signage that said College Station Roofing. I'd had my trucks that said College Station Roofing. Yes, the name change is pretty big, but that's that's what I would do, right? When it comes to that, be very careful with this, right? Make sure that it is legitimate, right? Make sure it's on your licensing, your insurance, your business name, your signage, all of that kind of thing. If you want this to stick, okay? Number three is proximity of address. We talked about this already, but you want to be as close as you possibly can to your ideal customers. I have a friend and I tell this story all the time. I've got a friend in the Chicago area, right? In the Southwest Chicago area, right? In one of the suburbs. And he was having a hard time ranking. And so he and I talked and he has his roofing company is in that area, right? So we got to talking and I said, why not just move your office closest to your exactly right outside of the, the best neighborhood in that area? So he did that. They bought an office, right? And got right next to these three and five million dollar homes. Guess what happened? They went from fifteen thousand dollar jobs, which is industry standard, okay, to hundred thousand dollar jobs, just like that. Because they went through the verification process because they and and they they got ranked in Google Maps because it was right next to that really good neighborhood. They were the closest search. So guess what? They got called a lot, a lot, a lot. They went from a million dollar company to last time I talked with them, they're twelve million dollars, and that's only been in about past three years. Okay, so it's important. This is an important thing right here. Okay, so the proximity of where people are searching from really is dependent. Is that one of the biggest ranking factors? If you have the possibility to do that, and you know where the best neighborhoods are, which hopefully you do right? In your service area, it doesn't have to be a huge office. It just has to be an office with signage and someone in it that you can prove. Now, before I move on here, Steve had a question. What happens if you're doing business in a 60 mile radius from our home office? You're referring to the service area business, right? Ross did, you know, if you're watching this later on YouTube, right? My ops manager, Ross, is there. He said, it's still okay. You can have a service area still, but an HQ location is best. I think that is, is important that you do have an actual office. Google thinks it's important. It's not just us. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. Next physical address. Hey, we just talked about this. Yes. You have to have a physical address. All right. You have to have to have to have a physical address. We have a lot of roofing companies that come to us that their office is their home. That's okay. You don't want people showing up to your home, which is why most people place that as the as a service area business. Okay. Again, spend the five, six hundred thousand dollars, whatever that it takes, you know, per month to get that office. But when you do that, make sure it is right next to the very most valuable neighborhood. It could be literally worth millions. Okay. High rating and reviews. Right. This is important because Google doesn't want that's that trustworthiness, right? They don't want you in that three pack, okay, if you're not trustworthy, you're not going to be there. Then if, if you've got a, a three star overall reviews out of 50 reviews, they're not going to place you there. Okay. And that's for a reason. Again, it comes down to that reputation pillar. Google follows this as well. They're just not going to uh, put you up there. Number six, additional categories. So what this means is that there are all sorts of things that you can fill out inside of your Google business profile. Tons of things. One of those that they just added, additional categories. Okay, so make sure you fill them out. And what do we fill them out with? Well, your services. Take your services, add a description to those, add a picture, add everything that you can possibly add that Google allows you to add. Okay, and... It's that simple. How do you add the descriptions? We'd like to go to chat GPT, ask it to write us something. Okay. Write us something and, and we place it in there. Number seven, high number of reviews. Again, this the reviews, if you notice, are in here twice. How highly that you're rated and the amount of reviews. Okay. So 
this tells me that you have to have steady reviews coming in at a steady rate. You have to make it a priority if you want to be in that three pack these days, especially, especially if you are in a very competitive area like DFW. Okay. Super, super important. Verified a Google business profile. This is kind of a no brainer, right? You have to verify your Google business profile. And that means is that you're setting it up with Google. You're, you're demonstrating to them that you are a legitimate business. Okay. That your business is a legitimate business. Number nine, completeness of Google business profile. It's not hard, right? Go through that entire thing. Google ads a lot of stuff all the time. So check in on this periodically. They're constantly adding new things. Like, I don't know, maybe six months ago, I think they added, you know, links for your social media. Fill it in. Take the time, fill that in. Make sure that it is as complete as possible. Now, inside of, the Google business profile nowadays, it has a little ranking or not a ranking. It has a completeness little meter. It used to go all the way to green if you filled everything out. Unfortunately, now in order to get to green, like it, it shows you red, orange, green, right? On, on, on how complete that you are. Nowadays, unfortunately, in order to get that full green, you have to buy stuff from them. Okay. You have to buy their Google one whatever it's called, right? To where you get a, a, an email address from them. It's their system. We get to play by their rules. Okay. So if you want it fully green, go for it with, with our clients. We don't necessarily have to do that. We understand that that's the only thing holding us back, but make sure that you go and fill that out. Now, the last one is making sure that you have a sustained influx of reviews. Okay. So again, three times now on this list of top 10, we have reviews. What do you think is important, right? Reviews. Reviews are super, super, super important, which again comes back to that reputation pillar. Your reputation has to be solid. Sustained influx, this just means that you're getting them regularly. You're not going in bursts, right? Which is what most companies do. They'll, they'll make it a priority one time a year, maybe. And they'll tell all their salespeople, okay, I'm going to pay you $100 per review, okay? Don't do that. Make it, a, make it part of your system. That's what we, we recommend. Make it part of your system. So what do I mean by that? Make it, not only ask for it from your salespeople, not only ask from it from your foreman, right? When the job is complete, send it out right when you're invoicing them is, is what I, I say. Make it part of your, your job completion process. Make it a system, okay? Send them QR codes, right? Don't send them via email. Don't send QR codes via email, by the way. That doesn't work. I see a lot of people making that mistake these days. Send a link via email, have a QR code in on, you know, a, a postcard or, you know, something like that as part of the in-person, you know, ask from your foreman. Make it easy for them basically to get to that link to get and leave you your review. The easier that you make it, I'll tell you, the more chances that you actually have to get a review. And we want to make it as easy as possible. It's just like sales. The easier that we make you know, it to where people can call us more that we can make it easier that people can do business with us, the more chances that you're actually going to make that sell. Well, the same thing goes with reviews. The easier that you can make it for that homeowner to leave a review for you. This Some of that comes into customer experience. Some of that comes into how we ask for it as well. Now, the last step on that, by the way, is how often that you ask for that review. I suggest that you ask more than once. Because just like in sales, sales never is just a one-time thing, right? Why would asking for a review be a one-time thing? Ask them. Be like my 12-year-old daughter who bugs the ever-living everything out of me when she wants something. She will bug me until I finally break down and give in. Do the same thing to get a review. If they had a good experience, ask them and ask them and ask them and ask them again until they tell you, leave me alone. Let's go into how do you actually rank Right. And besides these top 10 things, everything that we've talked about, if you do all of those, still there are some other things that you need to do in order to rank. If you look at this right here, we went over how to rank organically last month. Okay. How to do SEO in 2024. This is my recipe. This is something, and I'm pointing over here because I've got another screen over here that has all of this, but this is the recipe that we use for our clients. 
okay, starts with your website. You're not going to rank in the three pack without a website. It just ain't going to happen. It has to be a good website. It has to be fast. It has to be trustworthy. It has to show authority, right? All Remember that eat thing? We've got to do all of that for your website first. So your website and what we do is that we have landing pages. These landing pages are service plus area pages. These pages demonstrate to Google, hey, we are an expert in this area because we're talking about it. We are an expert roofing company in College Station, Texas. We are an expert roofing contractor in College Station, Texas. By the way, we do gutters in, in, in College Station, Texas. We also do siding in College Station, Texas. Whatever your services are, think of that as these landing pages. That's what these are. These are built to provide authority to Google that you do what you say you do because there are so many websites that I go to and I look at a lot of them and my staff looks at a lot of them. There's so many of these websites that are three pages. They don't have extra pages that talk about their services. They don't have these pages that talk about where they are or where they want to rank. All right. So that's the landing pages part. That's this part right here. Okay. Now articles, right? This next step, we add these on a regular basis. We add these and then link to our landing pages. Why do we add articles? Well, because Google consumes text. Literally, they consume text. That's what Google does. These articles are basically spider food. So if we've got a search engine spider with a big G on it, right? Sitting out here waiting to consume some something, we want to feed it. So what we do with these articles is that we then share them out via social media. Okay, because guess what? Google is going to Twitter about 3 million times every single second, right? Every second. It's going there a lot. And it's finding new content to take back to the big G. Let's call this the big G over here. If they're taking that back to Google, so Google can figure out, okay, well, what is this about, right? All that kind of stuff. We want to be feeding it into the channels that Google's going to, all right? So we use these articles as what I call spider food because it's attracting the search engine spiders. Make them well-fed. That's right, Ross. We want well-fed spiders, right? So you have to do this on a regular basis. We found over time over the past 20 years that the less we do of these, the less you're going to rank, okay? The less you're going to be given any kind of authority by Google, less you're going to be given any kind of exper ex experience or expertise or trustworthiness, right? So this is providing a little bit of that. So let's feed those spiders. And by the way, inside of these articles, we link back to the landing pages, right? These are our service pages. These are our service plus location pages. What happens over time is that this page will go up in rankings as well as this. And this is organic side of things. But what this also does, what we found is that this gives you that authority, that expertise for Google three pack. Okay. Next thing that we do is that we link back to our clients' websites, right? And not just link back to our clients' websites, we link back to those landing pages. We do this through expert areas, power links, power websites. Where do you get those? We're going to talk about that here in a second. Okay, so I'm going to leave that, all right? But mostly you want local links, links coming from your local area, okay? You also want links coming from, I don't know, NRCA if you're part of the NRCA, right? National Roofing Contractors Association. If you're part of the roofers, if you're in Texas, the Roofing Contractors Association of Texas, we've got that listing. It points right back to our website. So provide that, yep, Better Business Bureau, Chamber of Commerce. These are kind of no-brainer ones, but very, <laughs> when we go to look at, at link back profiles, we notice, oh, this is, we're not, we're not linking back. Why are we not linking back to our website? Let's provide that authority, okay? That trustworthiness because these are coming from trustworthy websites. Next one, if you see over here, citations. Citations are still important, right? They're not on that top 10 list. We don't think overall that it is a ranking factor, but it's important, okay? Because the more of these that you have, citations are name, address, and phone number, right? And your website, typically, that are in directories. There are tons and tons of directories. Think Yelp, think you know, even Facebook. You have to put your, your address in on your Facebook page, LinkedIn. You know, there are thousands of places that you can do this from. And Google, believe it or not, still places importance on this stuff. Okay. So make sure that, that your citations are a priority. Articles, landing pages, website, 
social media, right? Links from around the internet. Could you better define citations? Yeah, absolutely. So citations are your listings on directories throughout the internet. All right. There are tons and tons. There are thousands of directories. Okay. Yelp is a good one. Everybody hates Yelp, but we need it. Yellow Pages is another one. We hate the Yellow Pages. Those things are dead. But at the same time, the online version of that is still out there. Facebook, Apple Maps, tons and tons of places. So these are directory listings, right? These are called citations because the, they contain your name, address, phone number, and website. You want to make sure that they are all aligned. They have the exact same name of your company down to a letter, down to a punctuation point. You want to make sure that your listings also has your address, again, down to the letter, down to the punctuation point. Whatever is in Google, that's our standard. Whatever is in Google, we make sure that it's on, it is exactly the same on all of these websites. Okay. All of these things need to align up. That's what the citations are. Does that make sense? And Ross says even listings like the GPS systems, TomTom, Tom, Garmin, you know, there's tons and tons of places that you can add these to. These all provide authority and trustworthiness. Okay. Okay. So I talked earlier about local links. Local links are important, right? How do you get local links? This is not a comprehensive list, but this is stuff that I've seen that have worked with clients in the past. Number one, local sponsorships, right? Teams, clubs, whatever. Make sure when you do a local sponsorship, let's say to the, I mean, my, my daughter's in softball right now. Okay. And, and you want to make sure that if you're a sponsor, that you're listed on their website and that it provides a link back to your website, not only from their website, but social media, right? Make sure that anywhere that we can find online that is linking back to you. Okay. And what is a link? Everyone always asks me that. What is a link? Well, a link is simply, you know, we all, when you click on it, it'll go from one website to the other. Google spiders, the way that Google works fundamentally down at the base of it is that it has software called spiders that goes from one link to another link. Okay. That's fundamentally how Google was built. And the more of those that you have pointing back to your website, in the early days, the more of those, the better. Now it's about quality. What's the quality of those? Which is why we're talking about local links because local has way more importance placed on it by Google for roofing companies specifically than ever before. Ross put a, a very good point in here. Anything with a .edu URL is huge. All right. I have a friend that I've consulted with over the past 20 years. He has one backlink to his website. It, it drives me nuts. He has one backlink to his website. That one backlink is for a sponsorship for the Texas A&M Writing Club. We're, we're in College Station, Texas. Texas A&M is right here, right? But it's, a dot, it's coming from a .edu you know, link, okay, URL. So he outranks all of his competition and has for the past 20 years from that one link, one link. So if you've got a college near you, I highly suggest go find a club that you can you can sponsor and make sure when you do sponsor that you get a link from their website to yours. That's typically like in a banner ad or or your logo that links, you know, make sure that link works. Check it periodically. Okay. So that's the number one tip right there. Host a local community event. These happen all the time. Christmas, whatever, St. Patrick's Day. Base it on a very specific season. Spread the word. Get a link from that website to yours, from their social media to yours. Make sure that link actually works, all that kind of stuff. All right, create a local resource page. I've seen this happen before, right? We don't typically do this for our clients, but it might not be a bad idea. You want them to do a local resource page. Mention a number of businesses that your customers might use as a resource, obviously not competitors, but let's say that you've got a, a referral partnership with the electricians right, uh, in your area or plumbing company or HVAC company in your area, or even better that you have a referral partnership with, I don't know, insurance agents. That's probably not the best idea there. Maybe realtors. There's all sorts of people that you can have referral resources with. Make a page on your website with those referral sources. Make sure that they put a page on their site that also links back to you. 
hey, that's the most important part of this. But because you're local, you get a little bit more importance placed on that link. Ross says, uh, the main goal, get your website URL listed on other websites. Local resources work best if links go both ways. Otherwise, you're just helping out the referrals and not yourself. That's right. Make sure it goes both ways. Exactly what I said. Next one, sponsor a scholarship. Hey, there's all sorts of opportunities for that, right? If you've got a high school near you, $1,000, $500 for a scholarship per year, man, that is gold. If you get a link on that website to your website, because you are a main scholarship provider, that's pure gold. And that also gives you opportunity to get even the best types of links from the local newspaper, local radio, local TV, which by the way, send them a press release. All right. This is the the newest winner of the scholarship. This is a, a, a gold moment right there. If you can do that, if, I mean, $1,000, $500 is a drop in the bucket for any marketing, okay, per year. Make it part of your plan next year or this year. Pitch guest posts to local sites in your area. There are tons of resources in your area, blogs that write about your area. Tell them, hey, I've got these writers over here. If you've got a team like ours, hey, I've got these guys over here that, that can write me articles. What do you need written about on roofing? I'd love to, to post something on your website. You know, and hey, by the way, can you provide a link back to my website from that? There's tons of opportunities for that. You can even probably go to the local media themselves and get the, the absolute gold standard in the, in the backlink that is local. Okay. Again, TV, radio, right? Any of those. Next one, host an interview. All right. Very few of y'all are going to be willing to do this, but this is what I do all the time. I interview people on my podcast, right? I interview people because they are authorities. They know what they're talking about in sales and operations in HR. By the way, if you don't know about my podcast, Roofer Growth Hacks, just do a search for that or go to our website, go find it. There's a lot of resources that a lot of great people that we've interviewed, but that's this exact same idea right here. All right, interview someone that's local, possibly could be a celebrity. Promote the interview to blogs, local news outlets, okay? Get those gold standard backlinks, local backlinks. This, These are all tactics and strategies that work to get you really juicy backlinks, okay? That's, that's truly a term, right? It's called link juice, I swear. That's been used for 20 years, all right? Press releases. Yep. Press releases are excellent. Anytime you do anything, you know, newsworthy, all of these things that's on this list and then some, do a press release. See if your local news will pick it up. Hey, South Austin, we just had six inch hail. Six inch. That's softball, right? Hail. It's huge. They're probably talking to some roofers right now. They, meaning the news out outlets, the day after or the day of, they were probably calling up and talking to local roofers. So, Everything we talked about is part of our overall roofing marketing system or marketing machine. I talk about machines and systems all the time. I see roofing companies have systems for their operations. I see them have systems for their sales. I have them see them have systems for their finance and admin, how they hire people, how they get paid. Very few of y'all have a marketing system in place that actually works. Use this system, read my book, which, by the way, if you want a free book, all right, I, I mentioned it at the very beginning, use this QR code or go to go.roofingsites.com. I will send you a free copy of my book electronically that you can download and read. If you want a physical copy, you can go to amazon.com and purchase it there. 336 pages of my knowledge of the past 20 years of working in the marketing industry and what works and doesn't work. So go there, use the QR code, go there right now or go to go.roofingsites.com. I have another freebie for you. Go and sign up for our free AI SEO course. I recorded a whole bunch of videos and gave you a whole bunch of tools on how to do some of this stuff yourself. If you are a do-it-yourselfer, go and do that. Go there. It's free. Go to roofingsites.com forward slash roofer dash AI dash SEO. If you're here live or watching this on YouTube, use the QR code. Make it a little bit easier to go to the course sign up for free okay it's i i'm giving it away here y'all next join the roofing marketing academy and mastermind right i have a group of, of of roofers that are in my mastermind coaching group okay we go over stuff like this and a little bit more in depth a lot more in depth and 
we work with you to help you build these systems. Okay. All of the things that my team does, I'll teach you how to do all of this. I mean, my goal again is to, to double the size of a hundred roofing companies by 2028. Part of that is that if you are not at the level that you can afford someone like us, okay, I want you to have the tools in hand in order to do that. So go over here, go to roofingsites.com forward slash academy dash sign up. Use the QR code on YouTube or here live. If you're here live, thank you for showing up, by the way. And go join our mastermind group, right? We have some great roofers in there that are learning how to build their own systems in their own company and do all this stuff themselves. Last but not least, hey, we'd love to help you. We do this stuff day in and day out for our, our clients. And if you are a roofing company that just wants to have someone do it for you, you love knowing how it works but you'd rather just have someone do it for you, use this QR code or go to roofingsites.com forward slash schedule, right? To book a strategy session with, well, with me, okay? And we're going to go through all of your marketing. We're going to assess it. We're going to find out exactly what is wrong with it. And then we're going to fix it. It's that simple. All right. If there are any other questions, let's go ahead and talk about them now. One strategy to fix. The comp most common thing that I see are websites. Websites just are not built to convert for most roofers. Most roofers' websites are, they talk about themselves. They don't have enough meat to them. They don't have enough text content to them. They don't have enough call to action buttons on them. The phone number is not easy to get to. It's not easy to hire you. And that's what we want to make. It, right. So I would say that one strategy, <laughs> fix your website first. Number two, set up LSA ads, local service ads. That those things are gold. If you if you use their system, if you actually use the back end of their system on a daily basis and mark leads as booked or, you know, and and you actually answer your phone, right? You're gonna get a lot of leads coming from local service ads. All right, Rochelle says in the four pack on Google, if you could choose only one to appear on, which one would it be? I don't think that's relevant. I say it's irrelevant because the very first thing that people look at are the reviews. How good is your reputation? How many reviews you got? If you've got one review in there with a good reputation and you've got a competitor in there with 100 with a good reputation, who do you think that they're going to call? Like even in this right here, what I'm, what I'm presenting right now, if you look at these three, who are you going to call? Not Ghostbusters. That was a joke, by the way. You're going to call number two there, Monarch, because they have 100, 111 reviews. Let's think like a consumer. That's really how you have to get down to it is think like the homeowners, okay? And get in their shoes. Who would they call? Who, who would they call, right? Number two on that list, probably going to be Porton Construction. Number three would be that new, new image. And guess, guess what? What happens if Monarch doesn't pick up their phone? They're going to go down the list to the next one, the next one, the next one. They're going to go with the first company that picks up the phone and can help solve their problem. Because everyone that is going to Google for this right here has a problem. And if you can't help them solve it, they're going to the next company that's going to. Don't expect people to leave a message, a voicemail. I see that. That's one of the biggest mistakes that I see on the sales side of things right? Marketing, we can bring the call, but on the sales side of things, you've got to answer the call. We call 30 to 50 roofing companies every single day. And I know 99% of y'all let the call go to voicemail or even worse, voicemail isn't set up or it's full. Got to make it easy for people to do business with you. That's really what it comes down to. The easier that it is to, to find you, the easier that it is to call you, the easier that it is to hire you, you're the roofing company that's going to win hands down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hopefully y'all got a lot out of this workshop. Again, go get my book, go get the free AI, AI SEO course. Call us. Our phone number's right there on our website. Go to roofingsites.com. It's easy to hit that number and to call us and to get that strategy session. Y'all have a great weekend and we'll see you guys next month for our next webinar. All right. See y'all.